Hello, Chaos. Hello, Cub. How's How our audio? How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. And yourself? I am doing fantastic today. We got a beautiful sunny day in Silverstone. And do you think it's going to be sunny for the race? Hopefully, yeah. I, I really do hope they get a, you know, a full dry quality and a full dry race. They are truly cursed with, with rain. Like, well, it's, it's not tell. a joke anymore, it's, it's an actual thing. I mean, you know, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a shaman off in my backyard doing a little dance right now, but we'll see how effective that is. Certainly shakes things up quite a bit, but it is very nice to get to see where everyone is, when the conditions don't get weird, when it doesn't come down to how well you can manage the transition, but just when you have a straight up very normal race. Last time we had some, some excitement from, uh, from El Susio Dan qualifying kind of low, and then having to fight his way up, and uh, JDR building up a powerful lead, and uh, I think that was the first time where uh, Dan has finished a race and hasn't uh, been in first position this season. Yeah, uh, you know, looking at Silverstone, this is... Uh... Ooh, so we, uh, we got some uh, information from uh, our weatherman. Balls excess, no rain for quality or the race. Fantastic news. <laughs> All right. Looking at Silverstone, you know this is a pretty technical track. I I, I would say, especially sector one. And the S's. You really have to, you know, nail those corners to get a good lap time in here. Yeah, Megas and Beckus are pretty, pretty legendary for being the corners that decide so much time on this track. If you can carry a lot of speed through them and not get penalties, you can make up a full half a second, maybe even a full second on someone who's taking them suboptimally. So who's our first guy to sell laptop? It's gonna be Rogaine, isn't it? I'm gonna get on board with him. We'll see how he does. He is on mediums, so he's uh, he's going for that one stop mediums to hards, most likely. And I'm riding uh, on board with Red Bear. Yeah. I think one stop is the way to go on this track. Maybe if we had like a, you know, refueling, maybe a two-stop would be faster, but we don't have that in, in F1 anymore. Actually, Not yet. although there has been a little bit of a little bit of news coming out of uh, real life F1 lately, where they're going to be experimenting with essentially a qualifying race on Saturdays for three races this season. Yeah, so we're I'm intrigued. In a, on a hot lap. Slightly, uh, the car doesn't want to stick to the ground in turn one. Uh, sector one, uh, was okay, could, could have been better. And got a little flex in a sector, dude. that's just a slow going car, so it wasn't an accident. Uh, J.O. Patel was off the uh, racetrack just before his uh, start of the lap. So, Sector 2 going okay so far. And now the, the important part, the SS. Ooh, completely misses that turn and invalidates. Meanwhile, I've been riding on board with uh, Red Baron, who's just coming Red up Baron. into, I believe it's Cops. Uh, is that the high speed corner at the bottom of the track? See, I never I never learned those, uh, those yeah. names, actually. I, I, I'm, I'm going to pull up my little map so that I can sound like a real yeah. British person. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pull up a a map of it too, so you know I can. It was cops. Like, it was cops. Okay. Cops, right, cops, so. like a cops of trees, oh, like a word okay. that no one ever uses, but it's a term for a little group of trees. Which, as we know, there's tons of trees in that corner. All right, here comes Red Baron, and I think he's going to be the first one to actually set a lap time here. 
There we go, and a 125.38 is the marker for everyone else to follow up on. And here comes Ian Brax, uh, second off, Luke Brax, only a tenth off. I feel like uh, a 20, uh, 25, uh, you know, I've seen uh, low 24s from JD. Yeah. They're going to be pushing and, uh, down the 24s almost certainly, especially with these conditions that the track's going to keep on rubbering in for the next 12 minutes. Oh, looks a little wide for Rara, but he doesn't, oh yeah, it's disallowed. Yeah, invalidates the uh, the lap time. Meanwhile, here comes Nameless Nate. And looks like he had a bit of trouble on that lap. He's down at 7, 2.2 seconds off the pace of Red Baron, who still remains on pole position. So, uh, I'll switch here then with a 26 out. I guess uh, he went back to his original name. I'm not sure what to call him now. I'm gonna call uh, him Alcissio Dan. Dan. We'll call yeah. him. We'll call him what he's written in as, unless he asks us explicitly to call me Bruno. Yeah. So Rara actually that twenty-seven point seven, but it, he's it, he's still invalidated. So. Pat was out up to eighth with a one point three off of uh, Red Baron's time. So the only person on hot lap is Brother John, I think. And it's a bit hard to say that. It looks like he's doing a couple of laps, uh, since he's already on one lap old softs. Maybe, maybe he's just, you know, trying to feel out where the grip is on the track. It's honestly not that bad an idea to go up, especially if you're really wanting to get the feel of the car, because multiplayer feels a little bit different than time trial, and if you haven't had the opportunity to practice with other people, it can be nice to take your first session out and just bring a couple laps of fuel run it, really get yourself uh, dialed in before you throw in a non-banker lap. Alright, here we go, yeah. into the final corners, and through Vale. Sector 3 is also, uh, uh, you know, it has turns that you can gain a lot of time, and all, but also lose all of time. 26.8, puts in P9. Just ahead of Jay. That was, that was an okay lap, considering those uh, his softs were, you know, uh, brand new softs. They were actually one lap out game crashed. Okay, that, I'm gonna invite that man again. Okay, this is game crashed. Okay, row gain. Coming into the pits, okay. And here we go, Chris JD on his out lap. JD's starting a hot lap right now on mediums. So uh, definitely going for that one stop. I see that people are trying that that one stop here. I think that one stop is even possible if you start on softs. I think. Uh... Oh, oh, Chris with the kick of oversteer, and that's going to cost his lap heavily. So A JD, bit of excitement. pretty solid sector one, I must say. Could have been closer to the apexes, but it, it will do. No, no purple sector, no, no fastest sector for him though. Not likely to get a fastest sector on mediums. Yeah. Even I with his, uh, his strength against this field. Oh, Dumbass back. Or rather in. So yeah, this is, you know, that uh, fast right-hander is still flat out. Even on mediums. And that's Cops, Magus, and Beckett's, and then the corner that they're going to be coming up to is Stowe. And then Vale and Club is the last corner. Just looking over on the side there, reviewing my little map from Wikipedia. Hoping that the Wikipedians have not lied to me today. Here we go. Through the final corner and coming out, and JDR puts himself on pole position with a 125.038 on medium tires. That is a line in the sand for everyone. Can you get ahead of me on softs? That is a pretty solid lap time. Yeah, a two, uh, two low 24, let's say a 24 flat on softs and he does a flat 25 on mediums. Robert is, uh... is going to be the next one starting a uh, full lap, but there's no one going to be starting for the next 15 seconds or so. Is Krith on a hot lap right now? Looks like he may be. 
No, it's uh, disallowed. Like again, is on a hot lap right now. Just coming through Magus and Beckett's, coming into Sector 3. Let's see how his time looks through the split. I'm on board with Router right now. Neon's turn 1, flat out. There's a McLaren to his right, lets him through. That was uh... We drops it to first gear to, to get an extra rotation out of the car. And like again, setting his uh, time. And he's up to 13th, he's 1.9 off the pace, ahead of Gapleg and right behind J.O. Patel, who has set his, uh, he's going to set a time on mediums, J is. So Raro, I think uh, doing a pre pretty good job so far. But now uh, here comes the asses. Flat out. Oh, misses the apex. I think he slightly lifted through a uh, right hander. Now the asses. Uses a lot of engine braking. Um, messes up the exit out of uh, out of the asses. That's gonna cost him a bit of time. I think it's gonna still be a, a competitive lap time though. Ooh, goes on white speed. too. Yeah, you want to be w way closer to the uh, to the curb on the inside. That definitely lost some time. There you go. Good, very Final good on traction. And he goes so fifth. By P5. the way, uh, you're using OBS to stream, right? Yes, I am. Uh, could you turn up your mic a little bit? Uh, Narket notes that uh, your mic's just a little bit quiet, so if you could turn it up relative to the uh, sound of the desktop audio. You know, my mic is actually full. Like it's I, full. I can, yeah, I can't turn it up anymore. Uh, you could possibly. What you could do is you could I just can go... turn down the desktop audio. Yeah. Just to set and balance a little different. Yeah. Turn it down. But then I, I'm not. Okay, he's gonna have to let me know if you're too loud. Then. Absolutely. I can, yeah. I can turn up my mic, but there's gonna be a lot of uh, background noise and white noise. So I don't wanna do that. And I just want to make sure that I don't break everyone's ears with my speaking. Narkip says that's better. That's better. Awesome. Alright, Elsusia Dan coming in here. A little bit of a lockup coming into the final corners. Getting the power down as best he can when he comes through. And Dan is not able to top JDR's lap, but JDR is now going out on softs. Here's an interesting story. So this is a pretty close qualifying so far. Certainly is, yeah. These are our two big, uh, what's what's shaping up to be our championship contenders this year, JDR and Dan. So and Balzac they're within the 10. Gonna start a hot lap right now. Giving himself a little bit of space. And then the power goes down as he comes out of Stowe. Solid turn one. I'm oh, sorry, that's club. I need to keep the map up clearly. <laughs> First gear, again, to get that extra rotation. Ooh. A bit of trouble getting on traction there. I don't think it lasts him a lot of time though. The power goes down on the left field, heading up to Cops. Just a tiniest hint of a lift, maybe none at all. There shouldn't be much of a lift through there. Downshifting to make it up through Magus and Beckett's, and into the hangar straight. That was pretty good for the asses. Could have had it just a little bit tighter, but he goes nice and making use of all of the track here, carrying as much speed as he possibly can into Vale and Club. One corner to go. Can he get the power on nicely here as he comes up? The finish line is so close after the very end, and Palzak is up to P3. 
Uh, 0.173 off of JDR's time. So we've got three cars within two tenths of a second in the competition for pole. I don't think Balzac's going to have the time for another lap. Uh, if our timer it's, it's gonna be is close, yeah. correct. Yeah, that it's, timer thing, even I don't with know that, why Giving him that. another minute is going to be, it's going to be close. So Rogaine is improving his two times up on his time, going through the S's right now. You know, I'm surprised that people... Are, like, I think I, I only saw Raro using like aggressive downshifting and using a lot of engine braking through the S's. So far I'm seeing like very calm downshifts where you know the, the engine just doesn't scream on the downshift. Which I find, you know, actually weird because through the S's you you want to use that engine braking more. And oh, Rogan puts some pole. Hey, hey, there we go, and it's tight. That's sixty-nine thousandths of a second. That is a solid lap time. That is a very solid lap time. So JDR going out of the pits now. Definitely gonna have uh, enough time for our last top lap here. Balls like in the pits. Uh, maybe, and he's maybe right behind our Rara. timers up. Uh, oh, pardon me. That's not Raro. Uh, that is Red Baron, who's just ahead of him. Although Red Baron has let him through, he doesn't prestige. want to have JTR uh, breathing prestige down his neck. Prestige was a P6, about 25-4 technically. Let's round it up. Nicely done. Nicely done. No. From P1 to P8. You got seven tenths of a gap, so that's not a big of a gap. Usually, you know, we see like a one second gap from like P2 to P3, but this time it's way much closer. So also, Sudan gonna start this hot lap, try, gonna definitely try to see that uh, pole position from Rogaine, but JD is gonna do the same. And here comes Raro, uh, making one more attempt to uh, to set a, uh, a Q3, or I suppose the only Q lap. So also Sudan, solid sector one, already improved on his uh, current lap time that he has set. If he keeps that pace, he's definitely gonna take that podium away from Rogaine. And J.O. Patel, uh, setting a lap, still on mediums. He's, he's trying to get into the top 10 on those mediums so that he can have the nice... Oh no! Oh, that's a big block. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Brother John, uh... Well, that's uh, there goes Jay's uh, final qualifying lap. Did you did you catch that? Yes, I caught that. That was uh, unfortunate. Did he spin out or something? He was off the track and then oh. he lurched onto the track. Oh my god! I'm so sorry, Yosus Yudan. As uh, as I uh, as soon as I asked, did he spin out? Yosus Yudan just lost the traction. Critical thing, JDR just uh, disallowed his lap through Maggots and Beckets. So He's it looks like Rogan is going to take pole position. That looks Chaos. like it also. We forgot we the pole position predictions this time. Uh, you know, my prediction was going to be JDR on pole, but Dan to win the race. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I was just Dan on pole and he's going to win too. Oh, uh, okay. We, so well, it doesn't count anymore because Rogan. Steals yeah, the pole well, from well, both of them. Either case, both of us are wrong. Neither of us thought that Rogaine had the lap there, but he absolutely did. But let's not speak like this qualifying is over. We've still got several people on the lap. Ian Brax coming in here to set his final lap right now. He's in eighth place, four tenths off of the leader. Let's see what yeah. he can do here. Uh, he's gonna. He's uh, 123 already, so. That lap oh, yeah, this is not improve. lap. That's not lap. Yeah, maybe you know, maybe we're not seeing those low twenty fours because yeah, the track is just so low grip. Maybe that that's the case. 
we had that happen in Monza, if you remember last season. Where yeah, with things just was... not picking up the way that you would expect. Yeah. Yeah, the track was just mm, you could there was no grip at all. So we're all getting P1. I think he's the uh, the very first person to set a foot on pole position that is not JD or a Susio Dan. Yeah, uh, who is pole position in China? Just a second, let me check that. I think ever since JD and uh, Susio Dan joined, I think they're, you know, just trading whoever gets the pole. So yeah, JD though, he is on mediums. So he's in a pretty good spot. Assisio then is uh, definitely going to have to overtake him really quickly. Maybe uh, lap 2, lap 1. Oh, this is going to be an interesting race. So yes, I just got that information out. So our pole positions thus far, JDR has had pole in Australia, Bahrain, Azerbaijan, Canada, Austria. And uh, Susio Dan has had only in China where he ended up retiring from the race. So JDR is the qualifier uh, for this season. So nobody else besides Susio and JD has Rogaine has been position. the only person who has actually been able to beat JDR because he wasn't in China. He was not present for that race. So wow. this is the first time anyone has qualified in front of JDR. And as a result of that, this is the first time that JDR is actually going to have to start a race behind someone this season. Uh, but just keep in mind that JD is on mediums. So, you know, speaking uh, race pace, he's going to be struggling, you know, in the first five laps, but I, then he's gonna, you know, the the soft drivers are gonna, you know, start losing the pace, and he's gonna be the one gaining on them. So I think if he can uh, defend that P2 from El then for as long as he can, he's gonna be in a pretty good spot to win the race. Unless Rogan, you know, just pulls some crazy pace on on both of them and uh, pulls some big gap. He's definitely. In that race, you know, maybe he's gonna fight for that win as well. Absolutely. And so for podium predictions, I'm gonna say Bruno, JDR, Rogaine. I mean, it, it seems very basic of me to, to throw that out, but I'm gonna say Bruno, JDR, Rogaine. This season thus far, while JDR has outqualified, Bruno has only been beaten head to head once by him. And uh, that was say... last week in Austria with a bit of an odd conditions uh, throughout, and also uh, uncharacteristically poor qualifying from uh, from El Susudan slash Bruno. Yeah, I think JD is the better qualifier, but El Susudan has a stronger race pace. But you know, for this race, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Rogan P1, Susio El Susudan P2, uh, and JD P3. All right. Well, let's I have see. Hopes. Is he going I have to hopes be able to live up? I'll, I'll, I'll put this down for the for the record. Yeah, I, I hope that something happens. You know, I'm not hoping for a crash. God no. But I I hope that you know they all put on a on a show for us tonight, and uh, I hope you get a good race today. In either case, neither of us have uh, have put a very strong bet up for anyone else other than those three. So we're gonna have the uh, five lights out in just a sec. Rogan leading the pack. And Baron John 
jumps the start, gets a drive through penalty, and Rogaine looks like he's gonna keep that P1 so far. As you see, then already overtakes JD. And we got, uh, I think that's a Mercedes, I think that's a Lacadian that's already in the wall or something. Some some contact with somebody happened. Rogaine. Yeah, his, uh, he's got some damage to his right end plate. Yeah. Oh, and a collision with Nameless Nate. So Rogaine, pretty good so far, Man maintains that P1. Lacadian, uh, he definitely has some damage on his car, as you said. And already we got so many penalties. And a VSC, so let's get it sorted yeah. out. So, uh... So, looking at position change, El Susia Dan is up one position, JDR is down one. Luke Brax is up, having overtaken Balzac, Red Baron, and Prestige have held their positions. Pat Lassard is up three places to nine, while Roro and Griff have both lost a position. Dubman is up three positions, Nameless Nate four. Basically, everyone who started near the back has made up several positions at the expense of Bricklot, Jail Patel, and Leica Dian. Bad day for the racing points, and we are green once again. We are green, and Balzac already behind. Or oh, actually going wide. side by side by Luke. And he's gonna make it stick. Maybe, maybe Luke can uh, fight on the, on the outside. But now Balzac takes P4 and is right behind JD. And as I said before, JD is gonna struggle with pace here. Just because he's on the hardest side by side. Out. And you got many people in the pits. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Prestige cars spins off! And, oh dear. Uh, classic Ferrari. So we got. One, two, three, yeah, we got six people in the pits. And Al Susio Dan is already in P1, overtakes Rogaine, which I didn't catch. Now, can Rogaine Rogaine's fight back? going a little wide here, but JDR doesn't get into the opening. JDR already behind him. And uh, first some of the audience predictions, Narkip says Bruno, Robert Rogaine, and Lucky Moose with the call for Balzac uh, P1, which honestly could happen. These guys in front are getting a little racy with the, each other. If JDR gets impatient behind Rogaine, wow. and he's going to have to make a move if he doesn't want Dan to start pulling a big lead here, this could be very bad for the both of them. JDR going to make a move here. Nope. Did you see how close JD was through the S's? He was right behind Rogan and he didn't like lose any time to him. That was pretty crazy. That's impressive, especially on these medium tires. Yeah, and considering how much dirty air in there is. Through like especially the S's, because you know, you're going like, I don't know, 250k to 50k to maybe 270. So that the downforce is uh, playing a big role in actually getting you through the corner. And there's going to be a lot of people who've already had major setbacks to their strategies here. So basically everyone outside of the top 10 has had a very, very difficult start to their race. Yeah, so far only top 5 is... well, top 4. Well, ah, top 5. Uh, is top 5 and top 6 to 8. These are like the two groups that are pretty close to each other. The rest is, you know, just spread out on the racetrack. And I think Luke Brax is the seat to be sitting in and watching right now, since he's got yeah. a beautiful view of the fight going on ahead of him. Balzac, so Rogaine just is gonna lose that P2 to JD. Nothing he can do. And it do. happens right there. Yep, he's gonna go in on the side there, but he can't quite get the draft to take it back. And JDR no. is now going to have to chase down the Sissio Dan Rogan taps the grass. Balzac's ooh, nearly makes a move there. Balzac. Some tight racing there between Rogan and Balzac for third place right now. And Luke Prax is just watching here. Gonna try and yeah. keep his nose clean. JD gets the fastest lap now. So you know you can see he he has the pace now. It's been keep in mind that was a DRS assisted fastest lap. El Susio oh, yeah, that, not that is that. true. That is true. 
So the question is, how is their pace going to be relative to each other? So we're gonna fight for P3 now. Ball's like just chasing down wrong. Is he gonna make a move? He's going on the outside right the here. Outside. Oh, they a make a bit of barging the... side to side. And Ball's yeah. is not able to take the position where again holds on to it. A bit of oversteer also. Also, Perklot has made a move past Dubman in order to take ninth place. Yeah, so look, it's right behind Balzac. And Rogaine is gonna somehow... He's going to somehow try and defend that P3 he has right now. But he's going to have two people behind him, both with DRS. I don't he think he can defend Balzac, but maybe even look at, maybe even look is gonna get a, a run on him, and he does, and he goes on the there inside. There we go, up the inside, and Rogan down into P5. A difficult race so far for a pole sitter, but he just needs to... Oh, is he gonna dive back to the inside? Ooh, what was that? Oh dear. Well, there goes his front wing. Oh no, I was just saying he was gonna have to just sit back, calm down, and... He's, he he's gonna have to do a full lap. Point? Well, he did a very, very uh, optimistic, I'll put it, dive to the inside there, and that was uh, just more than his traction could handle. And now Rogan yeah. is going to be dealing with a damaged front wing. He's gonna want to pit in for that, maybe put on some hearts and take those to the finish. But oh, that's so that's so painful for Rogan. I think he was just getting frustrated with the overtakes and really wanted to get something done. But sometimes you just have to say, okay. What can I do to maximize my pace, to minimize my overall race time here? Yeah, I think uh, I, I I didn't catch it on his onboard because I literally just switched the camera. But I think it looked like to me he just missed his breaking point. And he went extremely tight, so he would have had a very compromised line. Yeah. Also, I'd like to point out JDR has reeled in El Susio Dan very quickly here. He's within 0.3 seconds, and now, here we are, coming out onto the hangar straight. Yeah, nothing else to Goes to the outside, right Alsusio Dan takes the inside, but now he's going to be aggressive in his defense. And he actually defense, but can uh, JD cut back in? Well, he takes a look at it, but decides against it. Both of them slightly compromised, uh, coming into Vale, and then up through Club. Do you and Alsusio Dan defends successfully. I do see those clouds come, and I see a bit of a grayish haze in the air. I yeah, don't know I, I just think it fog. just got darker. I think it just got really dark. Uh, no. I'd like to point out Dan has had several lockups. He's locked up three times in the last four corners here. He's going to really be chewing into these cor into these tires. And uh, Narkin, you you may be right with uh, the need for some rain because it is just getting darker and darker here. Cub and I, I have look. noted. Oh, another lockup for Dan! And Luck is trying to make a move on Balzac. You know, sometimes those lockups are actually just uh, visual lockups. It's, it's a bug, actually, on uh, spectator mode. Well, I could I absolutely that. see Dan driving the wheels off of his car right now in order to hold JDR behind. The longer he can delay yeah. him, the more he can compromise that strategy because El Susio Dan is going to have the long running tires at the end here. And it's going to be to JDR to chase him in the later stages of the race. If he can hold him off right now, that would be good. So we can have Luke. Uh, Luke is Go going to make a move on balls like here, 100%. Can balls like just. Balzac goes he wide. Goes off track, but four wheels yeah, off the track, keeps, but he keeps holds the P4, position. I mean P3. Yeah, those clouds are nasty. I think we are. Uh, we're gonna see some rain really soon. I think. I would not be surprised. I am doing that. Uh, doing that dance. I have my uh, my wooden mask. <laughs> I've got my uh, my stick with two coconuts hanging off of it. I've got my rain staff. <laughs> yeah, uh... I'd like to just actually... point out, this has been a very, very good race for the Brax Brothers. They always struggle with their internet, but right now, things look like they're holding up, and they are running P4 and P5 and the Red Bulls. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty solid so far. Yeah, it's really good to see them getting the results, but honestly, I think they're 
that they deserve to be in these positions previously. Oh, Jay gets a fastest lap. Hey, nicely done. Yeah, let's see if uh, let's see if JD can make a move on us this time. He is he is pretty close coming out of the S's, so I assume that's it's not close the enough. Case. He's not gonna move here. He's going to just slot in behind. You know, I know that neither of them, neither Asusia Dan nor uh, JD oh, are using flag. the... Uh... Ooh, it's and we got a Mercedes, got off, Mercedes off track. And got a VSC virtual safety out. car called in once again. Is anyone going to pit here? I don't think that anyone's going to want to pit. Oh, nope, Red Baron coming into the pit lane. Making a fool out of me, he makes the quick decision to say, I'm going to take a pit stop here. And this could pay off very nicely. Uh, with 18 laps to go, I think he could take mediums to the end. You know, we missed the overtake on Balzac, actually. And the, th the, 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 the track goes green, so Red Baron's going to not get the optimal stop he might have been hoping for. But he's the first person to take a pit stop when he actually, hang on, he is getting his front wing replaced, so it's possible he had some damage that he incurred in this previous lap. We'll have to see his onboards later on. At any rate, JDR resumes his pursuit of El Susio Dan. And Balzac is Neither of them are using the DRS, actually. JD just, uh, you know. Just you know, stays behind Alsusia, but never actually uses the uh, the ERS. Bit of a moment for Nameless Nate, but he recovers quickly, yeah. and the yellow flags go away. Let's see if Balzac can uh, can fight. Look here, I think he's way too far back. And now Balzac is in a sandwich of Red Bulls. You now he got look in front of Ian, right behind him. Kind of unfortunate race for Rogaine, though. Started it P1, certainly is. And he, uh, P14 with five seconds worth of penalties. So I'd like to point out, Red Baron is in a very nice position right now. He is on uh, fresh medium tires. He is the leader of all the people who have pitted right now. He came out ahead critically of his teammate Rara. So things are looking quite nice for him right now. I would keep an eye on Red Baron later on in this race. Yeah, I just I actually just uh, switched cameras to them. I got a pretty good fight going on. Red Baron, Rara, and Jay. Well, oh yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, Jay has had some serious pace right now. JDR in close behind El Susi Dan coming into Vegas and Vegas, but there's just no pass available here. So let's see if he can get but a he's good He's going exit. to be really close here, I think. And he but is overtake is on. Hold. Here we though. go. As you see, then is not really using his CRS either again. Dan defending excellently, although you always have to think he is on the tires that should have the early advantage. But now, eight laps in, the advantage of those soft tires is just going to be eroding away. And Balzac actually makes, makes a move on. Uh, well, oh, no, Luke is in the pits. Yeah. So here's my question: Where is Luke going to come up relative to Red Baron? Because Red Baron got part of his pit stop covered by that virtual safety car. Oh, definitely in front of him. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. There's there, there's quite a gap. He's here. gonna be behind Dubman for sure, or maybe actually, yeah, he's gonna be behind Dubman, but definitely. Oh, and there's some. Con oh, and that's it. Then spun out there, there was some contact between the the two top runners here let's look for any and damage like JD, on that pass. Yeah, looks like JD is uh lifting slightly to uh and he's waiting for on oh, Susan I think there's uh, some foul play there I definitely saw contact though so uh, I think that's what spun him out I was looking away at the time unfortunately so I didn't catch it yeah, I just changed the cameras to them. So, 
so I don't see any damage on... Uh... No, both of them appear to be undamaged. It must have been some side-to-side -side contact. Yeah, it did spin out Osu's Yodan, though. So maybe we'll see a protest. And here we go. Dan, Dan is coming in for a pit stop right now. He's going to take ah. 16 laps. Also, the skies are brightening a little bit. I think that that was only a threat of rain. I, I need to go and do my dance a little bit more enthusiastically, perhaps. <laughs> and we've got several right. pitting in. Ian Brax as yeah. well, and Krith, all coming in right now. So now the question is, who is going to run the longest? Balzac is the one taking the absolute longest run on these softs. He's taken them up to 10 laps. He's going to pit with 11 laps of wear on them. Yeah, but is it, is it worth it, though? Keeping, you know, well, staying out on those old softs, you know? Because you you are going to be hurting on pace big time well, here. We, I'd like to point out that he is only uh, four and a half seconds behind JDR, so he hasn't been bleeding too much time. Also, a moment to point out uh, Birklot on his uh, 10 lap old mediums is running third place now, although he is going to have to pit, and there's a decent crowd that he's going to fall behind once he does make his pit stop. Uh, Dubman yeah. also running long on those mediums. A lot of people who started lower down in the field are running long on these mediums. They're going to be possibly hoping for rain even more than, uh, than the fans watching this race would be, since if they can take a really long run on these, they can make a one stop onto uh, intermediates work. So, now all eyes on El Susio Dan. Seventh place, he's pitted, he's fallen behind both of the Brax brothers uh, with that spin and that pit stop. Yeah, so Balzac in the pit. Let's see where he comes out. J.O. Patel, meanwhile, has gotten through on Raro and is now chasing down Red Baron. Honestly, Jay is, Jay is a man on the charge right now. He's uh, he's just ringing out the very last of the life of these uh, soft tires. Let's see if that, let's see if Balzac can actually come out in front of. Look here, it's gonna be really close. And now he comes out behind. Do you know who uh, who was in front when uh, Luke Pitt? Was it Luke in front or was it Balzac in front? Uh, it was Balzac in front. The Brax Ooh, brothers we got, were right uh, together. We got a Renault. Uh, that's Criff. Oh. oh, that was Criff? Oh, and Pat Lassard goes off as well. Same place. Huh? It's been tough. Also... Pat Lassard has been off a few times on that corner now. Yeah, and also Lacadian, same corner. He, uh, he actually DNF'd there. Oh, you know, I might have been confusing the two Mercedes there. No, they actually spun on the same corner, both. Again, but... another spin for Pat. Yeah, it's just the uh, the very hot, the hot tires. tires. Yeah, just needs to calm down, cool off the tires. He can still get points here. There's still half of the race to go. Eyes on El Susio Dan against Ian Brax for 6th place, he is going to have pace, he is going to want this position, and he's going to want it quickly. Yeah. Both getting out of the way for Rogan, as Rogan makes his way back up to 12th. Every yeah, G is, uh, G is in a big advantage, he has a big advantage here, because uh, El Susio Dan has to, you know, come fight through this traffic right now, while when JD pits, He's gonna come out, what, behind Bricklaw, maybe? I maybe, think maybe that Dan is going to have Ian on this next straight here. A little bit of a kick from Ian. And El Susio Dan holds it. He's coming in, Ian Brax. Defends a little bit, placing his car just so that there's not a clear way through on the outside. And with that nice placement, back he's able on to hold it. Here. Yep. An, an opening, an opening. Oh! Susie Dan went for it, but realized yeah. if I lose my wing here, any chance of a podium's over. Yeah, he played it safe. That's a smart one. Ian Brax goes on. tight. We're gonna go side by side. Side here. by side. Oh, there's contact. And that's a spin and up Ian for Ian Brax. He spins himself around straight, and I don't think he's going to lose nothing. Oh, he is. Red Baron is going to take him here. 
Red Baron goes around the side and takes seventh position from Ian Brax. And Jay right behind him. Oh, Jay actually just got a three second time on me. And he's coming up very Ooh, fast really on Ian Brax slow. here. Yeah, he's gonna overtake him maybe. No, overtake Ian has DRS. Off actually, yeah. Do you think Ghost is then left enough room for the right hander? Uh, I mean, I think he had the position. It, it, it's hard to say. Uh, as a yeah. steward, I shouldn't be biasing myself by speaking ahead of time here. Uh, RL Jordan Saint has completely took him out. Uh, we'll have the chance to review that afterwards, so I can't make a definitive statement on that, but it was definitely tight side by side there. Yeah, I think I think so too. So look behind Dubman right now. Well, there's turning in, Make and then there's turning sick, in though. and leaving, leaving space. Yeah. You can definitely squeeze someone in the corner while leaving enough space. Uh, you're not obliged to let someone pass you, but at the same time, I didn't see it from his direct perspective. I was looking sideways from car to car there. Yeah, so uh, us is your dad in a really bad spot, actually. Because he is, what, there's a... Uh, yeah, he's 30, like, 5, 30, maybe... Yeah, around 35 seconds behind JD. So JD's gonna pit, and he's gonna be, and uh, he's gonna actually stay P1. Unless, uh, unless the pit line here is, uh, like 30 seconds or something. Ian Brax is gonna try making a move on Red Baron, up the inside, and through. Looks nice and clean. Red Baron's gonna try and ride around the outside. Ian Brax very considerately leaving space. And it looks like he's secured the position. Red Baron falls to 8th place. Ian Brax recovers uh, what he lost from his collision um, with El Susio Dan going through uh, comps two laps ago. Yep, and uh, Ballsack is gonna make a move on Dubman. Also, further back, Brother John is chasing down Gapflag. Uh, Gapflag just pitted though, so here we have uh, fresh mediums versus old softs. Does Brother John have a move? It looks like he's a little bit too far back, but he could make a lunge here. Thinks better of it. These are old softs, he's not taking them to the end. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pitting in the next lap or two, because 11 lap old softs are going to be a difficult proposition. Here comes JDR for his pit. Yeah, and let's see where he actually comes out, because I'm not sure. Do you know how long the uh, pit lane is here? It's like the uh, default. It's a fairly, standard. it's a, it's a fairly short pit because you don't have to go through the veil and club chicane section. So yeah, but the eyes are on Luke uh, Brax right now. The white line, uh, where you have to turn on your pit limiter, is fairly uh, early on track. And he's gonna so want to come out right next to Brick, yeah. And I'd like to point out that uh, that Luke Brax here, he's the one to look at because he is now the leader of people who have already pitted. Yeah. So but he's, see. he's comfortably behind JDR, so right now, uh, the potential podium uh, positions, once Bricklab has made his pit stop, which he will have to, is JDR, Luke Brax, and Balzic. Arl Jordan saying, one of the longest pits in F1, thank you. And Prestige is through. It looks like Rogaine is in the pits. Only only eight laps on those hearts, so he must have taken some damage here. Meanwhile, El Susio Dan chasing down Balzek. This is for effective third place once Bricklot pits. And actually, JDR is going to be coming up on Bricklot very soon. Indeed, I wouldn't be surprised if he has DRS. No, nope, he didn't quite get DRS this lap. But Brick on those old, old mediums is not going to have the pace to hold up JDR for very long. So, Jay, fighting with Gary here. Oh, Bricklock gets out of the way, thinking this is not my race. Right now, Brick is just going to want to put this time and they get the softs on and run them fast to the end. 
Up so I'll just get down. I'm right behind balls like here. And they're running the very same strategy, so this is as close to uh to an even strategy fight as we're going to see. A little bit rough uh coming through the corner here, uh into Arena and down to Brooklyn's. Is there going to be any little uh over under here? No, there is not. Now let's see, who's got fastest lap right now? Let's see. I think uh, Jay has the fastest lap. That's correct. He? The fastest lap right now is JDR with 127.897. Of his uh, direct competitors, Luke Brax has a 28.6, Balzac has a 28.9. Dan has a 28-2, Brax, Ian Brax, has a 28-9, and here we go, El Susio Dan just makes his move on Balzac right as I'm speaking. And he holds it, El Susio Dan moves up into 4th place, next up he's going to be chasing down Luke Brax. JDR oh, sets another fastest speak, yeah. lap at 26-9, oh that's yellow oh, flag, that right now. Right off. I think that's Crit out. Yeah, yeah that's Crit has retired from the out. race. So will that uh, trigger a VSC? It doesn't look like it's going to, it's just holding the yellow flag in Sector 1. And his car is cleared. And with that, Crit is our second retirement from the race. There are now 16 drivers remaining. So Dan is now chasing down Luke Brax, and the other major race here right now is Red Baron chasing down Ian. Yeah, and Jay is right behind Raro. Maybe he'll make an overtake. On this well, he DRS has been here. on the charge lately, especially with Jay having this extremely aggressive strategy, just going from softs to softs. Actually, hang on, and he started on mediums actually. Yes, re recall that Jay started on mediums, and then pitted early to softs, and then pitted again for softs, so he's going for the two-stop, very fast strategy, getting as much out of these softs as he possibly can, and he is through on Raro. Yeah. And Brick finally pits. Gonna come out... Yeah, he's only going to have a very short run on these, uh, on these softs, so his strategy is gonna have to be to take full advantage of this. See what he can do? Oh, is he having to serve a penalty first? Looks like he is. Let's see what else is your land can do here. And for that uh, matter, Balzac has kept pace to El Susio yeah. Dan, so Luke Rax is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. He's against two people, both who have very marginally younger medium tires. Meanwhile, JDR is just comfortably building up a gap. His race has been very tidy, uh, not fraught in the least. Yeah, it's been very intriguing, this battle for the podium. It uh, was JDR versus Dan, and then we're going to have to have a look at that collision, and then Dan had his own collision uh, later on uh, with Ian. So Dan doesn't have a run on Luke Brax this time. Hopefully things stay clearer with this Brax, brother. Good Baron picks up a time penalty. That's going to be risky. Um, I'd like to point out Bricklot actually in a nice position. I was saying keep an eye on Red Baron late in the race. And he's sitting sixth right now. Uh, his challenger right now, directly behind him, is Bricklot. Prestige is on very old hearts that he's going to be taking to the end, I'm sure. But that's just not going to have very much pace at all. So it's all about, can Brick take these softs and just bully them to the end? Can he just wring pace out of them and haul in Red Baron? Because if so, uh, Brick's honestly run a very, very good strategy here. Yeah, so Ball's like actually fallen out out of that DRS from Osusio Dan, and Osusio Dan is right behind Luke. 
but Luke Brax is probably going to get DRS up here, so this is not going to be a good chance for an overtake for El Susio Dan. Maybe, I'm not sure if, uh, he's if, he, if he's within that one second gap that he needs to be. Critically, Luke Brax is very low on energy, he's been spending a lot of it. Yeah, and also see that has like 60%. He's going yep. full deploy, pouring out the ERS. Here we come. Three wide. Around the outside. And he goes wide and Luke Brax retakes the position, he dives in! Ooh. I did not see that coming. Kind of, they're side by side. Side here. by side. Well, that's a that's a lot of Brax side by sides that we're getting this race. And Luke holds the position with some very aggressive, but I think clean defense. But Dan's all over the back of him here. It's not a question of if, but when at this point. Since it seems that uh, that Dan has also kept a lot more life in his tires right here. He's got the DRS, Luke does not. He's deploying, he goes for the outside. How did he make it stick though? There's a side to side Ooh, collision, there's two contact, of them. And they're off track. Dan is pushed off. They're not They're not sure what to do, He's. He think. I think he had an illegal overtake. And Balzac is right behind them, is, is Balzac gonna... He's gonna have a run on our sister Dan here. Yeah, Dan is going inside. Are they going to go side by side through cops again? No. Balzik says, hey, I don't want to throw this way. But, but he now... cuts back in. He, they're, gonna, they're gonna go oh through, my side goodness. by side through the asses. Is he going to? Yes. Nope. Once again, Balzik makes saying, a hey, smart gonna... move. He, he, he's he's playing the through. long game here. He's just waiting. He's, he, he's a vulture. He's sitting here saying, when yeah. is my moment going to come? He doesn't necessarily have to force it himself. Luke and Dan fighting in front of him are going to cause something, and here we go. Once again, around the outside, El Susio Dan into the Stowe corner and coming up towards the pit exit. He has secured second place, and I think at this point he's probably going to start putting a gap on Luke, and now the question is, can Luke Brax hold off Balzac? So both of our podium crit, uh, predictions are pretty shot because we were both uh, looking yeah. at Rogaine. <laughs> and right now the question for Rogaine is, is he going to be able to fight his way back up into points? It's going to be difficult because there's a big gap between Nameless Snake and Dubman between 12th and 11th place. Yeah. Right now Raro is I, I don't think points are possible for him. Not without a couple more retirements in the last four oh. laps of this race. So uh, Balsak actually has a penalty and Luke Brax is going to fight with El Susio Dan here. Forces us to then to make a slight a minor mistake, but it's still a mistake. Ooh. Trouble with traction there. The red I'd like to point out. Bricklot is taking two and a half seconds every lap out of Ian Brax. And also, Red Baron has uh, made up a position on Ian Brax. I was thinking, hang on a moment, uh, Bricklot was chasing Red Baron, but Red Baron is looking really good here. Ian Brax should have more pace with the slightly younger mediums, but it's possible he's worn the motor. It's possible that Red Baron just has more pace at this stage of the race. Rogan picks so up So Luke is time. actually gonna. Luke is uh, still behind on Susio Dan, so maybe. Maybe they're gonna fight for that P2 still. But both Luke and Balzac are very low on energy. They're just not going to have much deploy. If El Susio Dan can break DRS, he's going to be looking pretty good here. Yeah, I think uh, Luke is having trouble with traction here. And he uses the ERS to actually keep up with El Susio Dan through the corners. And he has such precious uh, little ERS in order to use here. Honestly, Dan would not be a... Uh, would not be ill-advised in just dumping everything that he can to clear DRS range right now. Let Balzac and Luke Brax fight it out, because once Balzac is on the tail of Luke Brax, Luke's going to have to add his focus on that orange McLaren hungrily behind him. I'm surprised that uh, JD hasn't just uh, gone for a fastest lap. Uh, does, he has a fastest lap, right? Yes, he does. Yeah. So there's, I'm, I'm there's pretty no sure he can right. still improve it. Because uh, I think also Red Baron like and Ian Brax fighting for position how here. much ERS he has. There's a battle for fifth right now. Uh, some trading back and forth between Red Baron and Ian Brax retakes his position. I wonder if Ian made a mistake at some point and Red Baron was able to get past on him. Let's 
So look, he actually gets pretty close to Elsusiodan, but not close enough to actually make an overtake. He's got two laps to do it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Bricklot, his, his charge on Red Baron and Ian seems to be falling up a little bit short. He's going to have 7th pretty securely here, it looks like. But I, uh, he's not going to be able to challenge the guys fighting for 5th and 6th place right now. He still started like P11, so uh, P7 is going to be a good result. Oh yeah, here. absolutely. Uh, regardless of whether he can catch up with this or not, Bricklot has executed his strategy to perfection. Pretty good race from him, not gonna lie. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, it's been an interesting race from Balzac as well. He's just that consistent high finisher here. Uh, Luke Brack still chasing down El Susio Dan. Critically, Balzac has that time penalty, so he's not really going to be able to get past these guys. As we've seen, they're all on very similar strategies. Their paces are going to be fairly close to each other. Even if he was able to make a move, he would most likely uh, lose that position to penalties after the race. So I think. His strategy is just to set forth, keep it clean, see if the guys in front of him can maybe have a little bit of a tussle. Because if one of them goes off the track, that's just a Let's podium see if for Luke can make an actual overtake here. I think he is close. He's enough. close. He might look to the outside, might look for a cutback. But El Susia Dan is just glued to the inside through the apex of the corner. Maybe he'll send it on the oh, inside. He's no, he does at it. He was thinking yeah. it. He was thinking it. He's thinking, okay. I have very little left in this race. What can I do to get second? The key is he doesn't want to pick up a penalty, but he should know that with Balzac having a penalty behind him, he can afford to pick up one three second penalty. Meanwhile, Rogan is chasing down Nameless Nate uh, in a battle for 12. This is honestly just a sort of pride fight right here. So Raro making the move on Jay. And uh, I don't think Jay can fight back here. Uh, no chance. So how? Look how close Look is actually to El Susiodan. Maybe, maybe he'll make it happen on the last. Oh, excuse me, it's the lap 25. Never mind. I thought that that this is the last lap. Not quite. Keep in mind that JDR is sitting, starting these laps a little bit. Oh soon. no! Oh, Luke Rex picks up a time penalty. Yeah. That's going to make things much much harder for him. But still, Dan could pick up a penalty. He's pushing him. He's pushing him hard here. Meanwhile, Rogan coming through, trying to make a move on Nameless Nate. And he secures it. Rogan up to 12th place. Oh, I'm and Red Nameless Baron. Nate spins out just after he's passed. And but Red Brother John is right so behind. behind Ian. I think he's gonna make that overtake stick here. Let's see. Ian goes defensive on the inside. Can Red Baron cut back in? No, he cannot. No, there's no cutback for Red Baron. But we're coming here up to the funnel. Ooh! Ooh. Moment for Red Baron. He keeps it together, yeah. keeps it together. Keep in mind, he is only 8 seconds ahead of Red of Bricklot, and Brick has had a clean race. Red Baron has a time penalty. How much is it, actually? It's six seconds. Yeah, Red Baron needs so to be very careful. So Brick is here only one point two actually, seconds. Brick, Brick could actually uh, steal, uh, and it wouldn't be a steal. He could he could grab sixth place here. You know, if if you run a clean race and you finish within someone's penalty window, so we that's got a legit. car off. Looks like a Ferrari. That's named yeah, Nate again. Yes, Nate. I think uh, that's it's been a difficult race for Nate. All right, cool down those yeah. tires. Finish it off. And right now, uh, Jay still keeping a close pace to Rauro, but he's going to have a difficult time here making that position back. And with that little drop, the only really close battle yeah. left is going to be Red Baron. So, race is actually just finished. JD in P1. Coming to the, to the line right here. I was just here then. Grabs P2. Luke, Luke Brax takes a podium, his first of the season. Yeah. Balzac, Balzac P4. coming through, P4. Ian, Ian Brax still weighs back. There's a 20 second gap between 4th and 5th place here. And Red Pretty, pretty solid result off. for the Red Bulls today. Yeah, absolutely. 
And also, a uh, good finish. Uh, I, I was I was uh, shouting out Red Baron and Burkblad earlier, but with sixth and seventh, they have executed very nicely here. Brick yeah. coming Wait, through. Is, is Brick in that gap? I don't think he, he is. was yeah. almost there. Nine he was tenths. he was he was within a second of Red Baron. Uh, uh, he might have been able to push be, just a little bit more if he'd known how much closer he was. Prestige coming through. Uh, a quiet eighth place here. Ten RP seconds behind, five seconds ahead. JP Tower. Power through. And yes, JL Patel picks up the final point scoring position in 10th place, five seconds ahead of Dubman himself. Rogaine coming around. It's a difficult finish for our pole sitter here. And Gab Flag in 13th as the final finisher of this race. So it's 26 points for uh, JD, actually. I'm pretty sure he, he still got the fastest time. Driver of the Driver day, the, Brick. I honestly can't disagree with that. I yep, was very I agree too. Brick. He ran a was, really uh... nice strategy. He was running up with the big guys. He was also defending well against them. He didn't just immediately fall back. He was saying, no, no, I'm here on I'm here on merit. You have to get by. He was smart, though. When JDR was coming at him with a ton of pace, he just said, yeah, go, go on through. I'm not fighting for first. Uh, he had his target, and he took it. So, well done, well done. Yep, that was a pretty solid race, pretty good race. Clean. And Clean cleanliness is really, good points today. really, that's, that, that's the key where JDR kept it. I mean, we'll, we'll have to have a look at what happened between him and Dan, because that was the deciding moment of the race right there. Dan was right behind him earlier on, uh, right with him, I should say, uh, right, right ahead. And then yeah, I they think had their, that contact, yeah. that, I think because of that contact, Lesisio then ended up being in traffic after his pit stop. I think that was really crucial. Absolutely, yeah. And well, that's that's a that's a thing that we will we will look at. Uh, you and I both being stewards. Um, if if Dan thinks that something unfair happened, and I think there are a few people here who yeah, uh, may, uh, uh, yeah. may submit I think that too. protests. So it has a good chance that we'll be but reviewing some of this later on this week. Hopefully, you will get none. You know. Well, yes, we, we always like there having less There wasn't any dirty driving in today. I think it was oh. a, a fun race to watch. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, it was and all another fighting. intriguing development. Uh, fighting in, within like the top 10. Well, and honestly, there's there some good fights fighting outside of the top 10. There was Rogaine pushing to get back his positions. It was, yeah, it was a difficult race for Rogan. You can see that he is uh, one of only only three drivers who made it into the 127. So he had top three pace here. He had podium pace. Uh, so you have to feel for Rogan. Uh, I think he just got a little bit heated when he uh, when he fell down to fifth there and thought, I, I need to make a move right now, rather than thinking about the, uh, about the long term. And it ended up costing him really heavily as he uh, took some damage and ended up having to run a two stop here. Maybe he was, you know, looking at uh, at his MFD for a strategy change or something. Maybe he just got distracted and missed his breaking point. I've seen that happen. It happened to me. So, uh, no, it happens. Kind of sucks though, because you know, starting P1, fall that, fall to P13, uh, it definitely sucks. Yeah, it's, ne it's never a situation you want to find yourself back. But he's been doing very well this season. I'm sure that he's going to be. Coming back well in future weeks. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. All right. So, well, uh, both of us had uh, had two out of three correct podium drivers. Neither of us predicted Luke Brax. So, honestly, I think we have to uh, give our apologies to uh, to Luke. Your pace was yeah. really there, and that was a well fought and well earned podium. Uh, chasing down, really pressurizing Dan, holding off Balsic. Uh, making right through, and also uh, good job to Ian as well, uh, making making up positions and and holding on to fifth after that uh, that side by side collision through cops with Dan, and uh, who knows we we may be having a look at that, but uh, I won't I won't get into that until we're actually looking into it properly. Yeah, good finish by Red Bulls P P three and P five really solid points today. <laughs> All right, so this was. Silverstone, Div 2. Thank you guys for watching. And on and Wednesday, uh, we're going to have Division 1, same track, different set of drivers, no assists. We will see you guys then. Thank you guys for watching. See you then. I hope and, you guys uh, that's enjoyed usually, it. Uh, 
usually Red Baron and Raro and uh, Jay O Patel, although I think Jay might not be there this week. Um, but we'll hope to we'll see you We'll see what then. happens. Absolutely. Thank you very much for casting with me, Cub. Thank you, too. It's, uh, it's definitely better to talk to someone else than uh, just talking to myself, you know? Everything's better with friends. All right. Until Wednesday. Yes, indeed. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we we might get a uh, copyright hit on this uh, video. <laughs> I didn't know the uh, the F1 uh, team song is actually playing when you uh, show the like final results. That's a little ridiculous if they're gonna penalize that. It's literally their game. Yeah, but you know it's still you know a copyright thing. You know we live in the logical world.